up to collab with them and I'll scroll and look. I'm like, oh my God, two years ago when I bought that $20 camera, I said, yo, let's collab and they didn't hit me back. You know what I mean? And I look at all that stuff because I have all my messages saved. You know, everybody does. So I see all that. And when I see it, it like reminds me of how far I've actually come. You know what I mean? Because like he said, with the free stuff, I bought that $25 camera and it probably took me over a year to make my $25 back. Do you get what I'm saying? And that was just because I was so like, let me do a video for you. Let me shoot your music video. Let me do a video of anything. Let me take photos of you and your daughter or you and your son, you and your best friend. I was doing so much for free. And now, I, I even sometimes, if I because I enjoy it so much, if I like it, I'm going to go do it for free, even if it's no money involved, yeah. because I enjoy it. Yes, money makes it better, of course. But when you really have a passion for something, money's gonna come. Like that's gonna come down the line. Money doesn't make me happy. Doing what I like makes me happy. Nice. So therefore, if I enjoy it and like it, that money's gonna come. Like, and that's what I say all the time. Cause I, my mom has told me like in the beginning, she was real, you know, just get a regular job, go do a trade. You know what I mean? Go be a welder or, you know, be an electrician, something like that. And I was like, but that doesn't interest me. I don't think I'm gonna wanna do that forever. I think enjoying what you want to do. If you find if, facts, if you find what you really love in life and do it, it doesn't matter if you're making crumbs. You know what I mean? If you really like it, you're gonna do it. And that's even like athletes. You know how many people go overseas and are probably getting paid nothing, but they're playing a sport that they enjoy, so it's worth it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's the way I look at it. And like, um, as a big time opportunity, you know what I mean? You know that's gonna come. The harder you work, all that stuff's gonna come. You know what I mean? It's not gonna come in the beginning and it's definitely not gonna come if you quit. You know what I mean? Because right. that definitely is hitting me in my head because as a creator, you see other people's stuff and it, it sometimes makes you think, I'm not that good. I just seen bros work. He's way better than me. It looks way better than mine. So I must be terrible, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's anybody because as a human, you compare yourself. So you'll see so-and-so's work and then you'll look at your work and think that yours isn't good, but yours is good. It's good in its own way, you know what I mean? Everybody's thing is good in its own way and that's what's hard as a, a, a type of creator. You'll compare a lot, but you gotta remember that you can't compare and base it on that person's better than me because right. everybody has a different eye of what, what's, what's gonna come out. Like if you give me and Matt the same exact clips, Matt's video and my video are gonna look completely different. Yeah, so am I gonna say his is gonna be better or mine's gonna be better? No, because you could like mine, your, your girlfriend could like his, and you could both be like, well, we like both of them. It doesn't, it, it's not saying who's better, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's just everybody has a, a different creative thought. So the way I would put one clip, he might not even use that clip, you know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. And that's really big because I, you know, I've met a lot of different videographers and photographers lately doing this, you know, at all these events. And a lot of them say the same thing, that they get very discouraged by comparing themselves to other people. Yeah. Which it's hard not to because when you're on Instagram and you're scrolling. It's a society and you live in. Yeah, right? you see, you know, even it comes down to like, you know, even people dressing with clothes. You know, you could like your outfit, but then the person walked in, you like his more. And now you're thinking like, I look like a bum and he's fly. You know what I mean? Change. And I got no change. Exactly. Uh, that's fine. I'm about to front you yeah, to piggyback off of both of y'all, right? Um, first and foremost, stop hating. <laughs> right? Everybody just, you know, you can be the biggest biggest artists in the world look at them like for real like, like yo, everybody real. stop stop hating for real because number one it's not going to do anybody any good it's not helping you out you know what i'm saying but number two you could end up really discouraging somebody that could be great at something right in life and and to me that everybody knows that's what i do the opposite right i want to be that person that's like you know what i want to uplift everybody i'm trying to take matt to another level yeah. like well, yo, what can I do with the gym to get Matt here so yeah, he can yeah. film something that nobody's ever seen yet? You know what Honestly, I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I don't really, I have a type of attitude too where like, even when I see the hate, then they, I don't really care. Like, yeah, I've very, like I've developed over the past few years an attitude where like, block it out. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, for so, sure, for sure. Do my thing. I yeah. see people supporting me that, you know, some of these people don't even know me. Yeah. Right? And they're supporting me way more. Like, you know, at the yeah. end of the day, people are enjoying it. Oh, and that's another thing too, like piggyback off of that too, is shout out to the people that support us, right? Like for real, we, I know I'm kind of, we be a little Debbie Downers, we're talking about the people that hate it, but on the flip side, for real, shout out to people who support us because yeah. that's what keeps us going, right? Yeah. That's what allows us to be, that's what allows y'all to be creative. 
Mm -hmm. Like, yo, I'm gonna do this with this next video, right? Mm -hmm. It's not the person that's hating on you, it's the one that's mm -hmm. like, it's the one that's telling you how good it is. Bro, for real. The one that that's like, when are you dropping your next video? Yeah, yeah. That's, that makes you think, yeah. like, okay, so that person that told me it's whack, I'm not listening to them because that person loves it. The next person just hit me up asking when the next video is. Facts. And then one thing I've learned 100% from support, you will come encounter with people you do not know that are going to support you 100% more than people you know by first, last name, you know, damn near their social security number. That person might not support you like the person that lives all the way in Mississippi <laughs> that's gonna share your stuff every time you post it, that comments every time you post it. And that's a really big thing because I've noticed I have people I grew up with. When they post something, I like it, I share it. But when I post something, they don't like it and share it. But then my homeboy that I never met, that I met on Xbox, likes it, shares it, is tagging his family in it to watch yeah. it. You get what I'm saying? And I don't even know this person other than through a headset. But they're, they're showing me that they support me and, and, and fuck with me just as much as I fuck with them. Mm -hmm. And I don't even personally know them. Right. And then people you really know will see, oh, you just posted a video, scroll. But then the next person they... As a celebrity that they don't know, they like it and comment on that video or post, but it's like that celebrity doesn't even know you, but you'll comment and support them, but you don't want to comment and support the person you know, but that comes down to hate because a lot of people don't want to see people succeed. Yeah. People will say they do, but they don't. Just one more thing to figure back off that, like when we talk about people liking and sharing your posts, when I look at like engagement on my posts, I like, I like kind of rank them because you have to like look at this stuff. The big one I really look at is shares. People are sharing my hit, uh, you know, posts. Mm -hmm. It's more eyes on it. That tells me, right. oh, they want to put this on their story. Share this to all these other people. It brings in, it brings in the follows. It brings in the comments. Like follows are a big thing. Obviously, people are following your page, but the sharing leads to that. Likes are like a thing. Yeah, like for sure. Like, but I don't really look at it. like people could just scroll by, like it. not even look, not even watch it. Maybe they just like it. No, I post it. Mm -hmm. you know yes. what I mean, comments are big. I think comments are really cool. You know, yeah. sometimes you get. Like I'll get a post with no comments, but 60 people shared it. Right. And then on the, right. on the story where they share it, they comment, right? Right, so like, right, right. That's a comment to me. So I rank the engagement of the sharing is like the highest point. Like if you're sharing my post, that's the biggest support to me. So I think it's important too, um, in closing for this little aspect of this, is like um, to embrace the people that support you, no matter yeah. if it's from five minutes away or 50 thousand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. embrace it right i think we got to get to that spot in our lives where we stop looking at well why homie down the street ain't supporting me but bro from virginia did yeah. yep. you know what it is it's this hey you know what maybe he will maybe he won't hey but bro i appreciate you i think sometimes we got to flip it and just be optimistic you know what i'm saying and, and not allow other people's negativity to, to kind of run down on ours um so the transition right um in my show i ask every single person pretty much this question um and i love it because uh, I think it's a pivotal point on why we are who we are, right? So um, so we talk pain and loss um, and things that we go through in life, right? And, and a lot of people know I'm, I'm very upfront with uh, with my loss and things that I've gone through and things that have helped develop me to be who I am, right? Um, but I'm, I'm more so intrigued because I think this is where I can relate to a lot of people um, is I think we all have some type of loss, right? Yeah. There's no judgment for me on what loss is worse, but... I think it's, um, we all have that, you know what I'm saying, that development. So if y'all can think of a time in your life where you took a loss, there was some, something tough, you know what I'm saying, that really, really did mold you into who you are today, uh, what would you say that is? Uh, for me, there's a couple things. The first one is really losing myself. You know, after high school, you got to make the decisions of what do you want to do for the rest of your life, right? And that's tough. Uh, so I didn't, I went to college for a semester, took time off, because I know what I wanted to do, so I stopped. And then from like, sort of like two to four years, man, I was just depressed. Like, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Couldn't figure it out, was sleeping too much, just really like down. And I think that period of my life and overcoming that and turning into where I am now, I think I'm like the happiest I've ever been, I'm motivated. I just think that part of my life is really good for me. Another thing in terms of losing people, uh, my grandfather, I lost him a couple of years ago. And, you know, I said I had a weird relationship with my dad, but that's where I lost him, which was right around when I lost, or when I started getting into camera stuff, right? I, it's kind of just like pushing me more. I was like, I don't want to, you know, I want to make him happy in a way, even though, you know, 
we were younger, we had a great relationship. As we got older, we did. And I just wanted to make him happy. I wanted to make my mom more happy. So losing him, losing my grandfather, who I was really close to, kind of just like uplifted me more to just do more. I don't know. Something about losing them, you know, you lose somebody, you're down for a while, you know, but then it's like, all right, I gotta get up, I gotta do something. For sure. And that's kind of what, those those two really pushed me to do that. Love it. What about you, bro? Definitely my grandfather. So my grandfather passed away about a year ago now, my mother's father. And he was, like I said, he was a very big Cuse fan. So recently, during the TBT, when I got to go be around, you know, like Raheem Christmas and CJ Fair and all these big, once big Syracuse players, it felt so surreal because my grandfather would have been so happy and so proud because, like, he was the hugest, hugest Cuse fan. Like, growing up, that's the only reason I knew who Carmelo Anthony was, you know, Eric Dievendorf, all these players. People don't even know, know black players I can name from Syracuse because of him. Mm -hmm. And when I got to go do the TBT and then another pro tournament that they were playing in, which was some of the Syracuse t uh, players that played for Bayheim, it just felt so surreal because, like, I was just thinking, like, if my grandpa could see that, like, he wouldn't even believe me. He would think I'm lying, you know what I mean? He'd be like, there's no way you're hanging out with these people that we used to watch on TV together, you know, the games he would record and I'd come over that Saturday and we'd rewatch that Syracuse basketball game, like, and I got to hang out with these people and now they all follow me and they comment, they like, heart my stuff, they tell me keep going and it's really cool because I got to build a connection to people that I never thought I'd be able to, plus people that my grandfather cherished that didn't even know him, you know what I mean? Because he was such a big Q's fan. So just like this weekend, uh, this past weekend, I was at the Dome and I was filming for OCC. They had a little game in the Dome against the team. Just to be able to walk on that Syracuse floor felt surreal. It felt crazy. You know what I mean? I'm not an athlete, so I shouldn't be able to walk on that floor. You know, I am an athlete, but I'm not a Syracuse basketball player. Right. So you would think that's who's going on that that court. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So to be able to actually walk on that court, that that same court that I touched, Carmelo Anthony won his 2003 national champ. You know what I mean? Like it's crazy to to say. You know what I mean? And it felt very surreal. And like I said, I do a lot for him because. I know if he was here, everything I'm doing, he'd be super proud, and I know he'd support everything 100%. And he wouldn't question it. He wouldn't say, are you sure you're going to do this? Do you think that's really going to get you money down the line? He wouldn't be asking any of those questions because he already would know the answer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right. I love that, man. I love that for both of y'all. And I think um, you both kind of touched to, to basically why I asked that question is how, how does something like that um, mold you into who you are? today right and then more importantly how does that um push you to be better to want to be better to want things uh the next question um i ask pretty much everybody on the, on the show is um what are three things that you stand by okay so the your morals beliefs your standards you know what i'm saying what are three three words you know what i'm saying of things that um that you stand by that you you need bro, that's a requirement yeah you know what i'm saying this ain't like a, three uh, words yeah just three love words. ambition and family Love, ambition, and family. I like that. I'm trying to think, like, in terms of, like, sayings, I mean, at least motivation for myself is yeah. just always yeah. keep pushing. Stay positive. You know, you got to stay positive. And then, you know, just just lock it in, right? You got to be able to lock it in when you have to. For real. You know, I'm the worst procrastinator probably on the planet. So, like, the big thing for me is I got to be able to lock it in when I need to, right? You know, if I need something, I told somebody something's coming out tomorrow or something like that. Mm-hmm. And you gotta be able to do it, and you gotta be able to just, like I said, I think the positivity thing is a big thing. Just gotta stay positive, keep doing your thing, no matter what, right? Um, all right, cool. So this is gonna be a little speed round for y'all. I, I'm excited for this one. This is uh, specifically for you two. All right, um, Matt, you first, okay? Um, is it hard to continue to put out great content? Is it hard to keep that thing going, or is it easier now because you can? I think it's pretty easy, to be honest. Okay. Uh, I try to make every video different. Mm -hmm. uh, I like establishing, you know, every time a new opportunity comes up, whether it's a player or team, I try to approach it differently, if I can at least. You know, sometimes I'll edit heavy on one, sometimes I'll try to at least be better with my camera and things like that. I try to switch it up, just keep it different, you know, but I take on the challenge and I think it's pretty easy at this point. You know, I've got to the point where editing isn't too difficult anymore. Like, 
I really wanted to be good at that when I started, and it's gotten to the point where we're pretty efficient with it, I think is the way to put yeah, it. Yeah. It's probably not more of the editing, like getting all the clips every yeah, day and already more so It's more of like the, to, to the, the effects, you know what I mean? The little mm -hmm. cool things adding into your videos. Sometimes, like I said, I don't even do it as much, but it's more so getting the clips, like mm -hmm. just making sure I have everything I want. And I, I think the toughest thing for me is getting the vision in my head, what I want to do, mm -hmm. but more times than not, you know, it's, it's pretty easy, you know, just what for you. Um, I mean, yeah, I would say like getting all the clips and stuff onto your board, like on your, your editor is very easy. But once you, cause almost every video is pretty similar, you know, you have like, you, you have clips, so you're putting all the clips together. It's once all your clips are together, what you want to do with the video. I feel like sometimes it gets hard because sometimes you don't want to over edit because sometimes it might, if you put too many effects and stuff, you start to think it looks cheesy. Yeah. Or you might think another person might think it looks cheesy. Right, right. Or you'll just finish your editing video and then you start scrolling uh -huh. and you've seen somebody else and you're like, oh man, that video, I'm about to post the video, mine don't look like that video. So now I gotta go touch my video, you know what I mean? Because that's, that's just what happens when you're a creator. You know, you're gonna see other people's work. And it's not, like I'm saying, you're not, comparing it hating you're comparing it because you just seen somebody else's good work right and you're you're actually giving them a compliment because you're like damn i just saw that and i just did something now let me go back and touch mine up because you might have learned something from seeing theirs or you know just seeing it made you think i didn't go as hard on my video as i should have because maybe you know it comes down to like matt says procrastination sometimes you know you want to edit but you don't want to edit because it's not always fun you know what i mean and it comes down to creator's block. Sometimes you just don't know what to do. Like yeah, you're, you're yeah, like yeah. you're like, damn, my last video looks like the last video. But to me, it, it to to us because we're we we create you know content, we see it. But to an average eye, they don't. So to an average eye, they won't really notice the dis difference. But it's like when you're a creator, you notice the difference. So you're like to the next person, they're gonna think no matter what video you show them looks good. But to you, you might be like. That video looks like my last video, so it doesn't look good because I haven't improved. I didn't upgrade. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Um, what would your dream job be in terms of the photography, videography world? What would you, what would your dream job be? Definitely, you want to work at the professional level, right? right. It's yeah. just a matter of who I want to work for, you know? If you could use a sport, what yeah, sport Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I'm a big Yankee fan, but shooting baseball... It's not the best. Sometimes. It ain't that fun. But like, I'm a big Yankee fan. Like, I would, I would take that job in a heartbeat, right? Oh hell yeah! I honestly think if I had to pick a sport, professional sport that I'd want to shoot, probably football or basketball. Mm -hmm. Football group. I get to shoot football when I first started. That's cool. This is the first year I shot football. But I said working probably basketball, NBA. Like, if I could work for the Lakers, any team, you know, really any team, especially if they got like highlight players. Oh man, just being able to like get that footage, shoot it yourself, edit it. I mean, that would be amazing. So probably someone in NBA. All right, what about you? Definitely NFL, yeah. NBA. Um, I'm a Jets fan, so it'd be cool to work for the Jets. Or, you know, we were in the area, we were in New York, so maybe even like the Bills. The Jets are coming back too, bro. They're coming back out here? So yeah. That's, you know what I mean? That's I content for us to go get. Um, I'm pretty sure what I heard was this coming like here. Well, that'll be dope. That's and that's good hearing. content. Oh, that's that's connections, yeah, that's, networking. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing, bro. Um, all right, uh, a couple other ones I kind of like for y'all. Um, give me y'all top two favorite videos you've ever shot. Not even like it could be from the beginning. It could be the newest one. So it doesn't even have to. Yeah, you can scroll. You can scroll. <laughs> That's like when you ask, when you ask somebody, yo, what's your favorite song? Everybody's like, bro, they're, they're so right? yeah, you can't. Pick they have the their phone, bro. They scrolling. You can scroll and look, bro. Y'all got some good ones. Honestly. Man. I mean, the national championship one is up. That video is yeah, gas. That's, so, no, that's fire. That's probably, I'm a, that video is a really good video. No, I'm going to put a little one right here of it right now. I'm going to put it right here. Right, right. Now, right. I'm going to put it right there, bro. I'm telling uh, you. I mean, that video, that being at that game, the game was insane, right? It was a championship. Being on the winning end of it. I was sick. I was supposed to be with it, bro. Yeah, championship. And, you know, I didn't get to catch everything. Shout out to Ron, proud Abraham. He's a student over in Portland. He caught a lot of, like, up close shots, you know, we had a locker room access, oh, things man. like that, and we combined footage up to the game. Cool. And then just that being like a seven minute video, I'm a little nervous, but it's the most watched video I've done. And then so honestly, tough, right? like, I really enjoyed your video. That was That's like, tough. Was the workout one was cool, you know, it's that different cool. than just being the, like a sport yeah. on field, and I thought it would be really like, yeah. the songs you picked, things like that were really good. And honestly, man, I did one more recently for 
kid at Blue Ridge, Pennsylvania, bro. Connor, Connor Crane is. Bro, I, Connor. Connor's a great player. Yo, Connor, I don't know you, bro. <laughs> I really don't. But for the longest, I kept watching your videos. Yeah. I'm like, yo, who is Buddy Stupid? Yeah. Like, he, uh, that video came out really good. I was really proud of how that came out. It just flowed nicely and, like, He's, he had a great game. We actually I went back there a couple more games recently. Okay. Scored 48 points in one game, triple double. We haven't come out with that yet. Bro, stupid there. athletic though. So yeah, no, he's and he's smaller than me. So that's insane. <laughs> but I'd say those three, I love everybody else right out, man. Like, those but fire, those man. three especially, like I really enjoyed making. I really enjoyed going back and looking at them. So right, what about you? Uh, I mean, if I want to say my favorite video, I mean. I like all my videos. I like all you know. I like all the work I see myself do and other people. But like, honestly, I'd probably say like my favorite video I ever did would be more of like probably one of my first YouTube videos. Just because that's what got me wanting to do stuff with my camera. Because if I didn't go buy that twenty five dollar eBay camera and go do that public interview with my bros at the mall, I would have never picked up a we camera. Be and, you know, we wouldn't be right here. I would have never did it. So right. like. I would say that's probably one of, not my favorite video, but that's like a, a big memory for me that I would say is really, you know, good. But like, probably like favorite video, you know, I, like, I got a lot of good Cornell videos I did. Um, nice. The TBT, my, it's not like, I didn't really do a cool video for it, but like the, I took like, it has, there's a clip I posted, but I didn't do like an actual video for it, but they had a, it, cause the TBT is Elm ending. So it's the last shot wins. Okay, well, yeah. The team that I was hired by to come there, was a replacement team. So they weren't supposed to win. They were wearing jerseys with no names on the back. You know, they were supposed to just be there to lose. They ended up winning and like being a part of that felt really cool because I was a part of it. I wasn't on the team, but I was their cameraman. I was one of their cameramen. So like the locker room was really fun. Like just even re-seeing it on the TV, like him hitting that shot, it just felt so surreal. You know what I mean? It was really cool. And I was right there and like, when I see the clips that they posted on ESPN and I see myself walking out there, I'm like, yo, that's cool. Like, uh, I was on ESPN right there. That's cool to see. You know what I mean? That's way. Um, all right. Last one about the videos, okay? We got about 10 minutes. Last one, though. Um, name some of your top athletes, high school, college, whatever, that y'all have met um, or done videos for or even just seen mm -hmm. in the area, right? Um, it's kind of cool, y'all both kind of in <laughs> different areas and mix and match a little bit, but yeah, we see each other a lot too. <laughs> yeah, <we see laughs> like each other randomly, like we'll, we'll just pop up and see each other. And y'all know I'm connected, right? So I'm all with all these kids, and I know this person, this person. So when I see y'all, I'm like, oh, they they gotta know about someone, so and so, and so. Oh, like, four people yeah. for real, right? Yeah. So who are, if you could just think of just some people off the top of your head, who are some of those like some of the top athletes and like that you that you just enjoy watching? You know uh, what I'm for me. I'm gonna go with that sports, right? Like football. I mean, the SUNY Corbin team, especially the receivers, like Cole Burgess, JJ Lab, mm -hmm. Joe IDBO. Those three, they just, you can throw anything to them and catch it. Zach was crazy. Their quarterback, they just, they had so many special players, right? Mm -hmm. And watching them really in that encourage offense was just crazy. Yeah, it makes your video good. Yeah. Because people are catching the ball. Kind of. <laughs> that, that's yeah. big, you know. Yeah. You, we've talked about. Remember having somebody tell you to pull up and they don't play too well. Oh, yeah. That's hard to make them a video. You know what I mean? And then you feel bad because you don't want to tell them that they didn't play good because who are you to say that? You know. Right, right. And you. That means low key you gotta go to another game because you gotta get a little more film because you don't want to not do a video for them. You know what I mean? Uh, eight man football definitely Kyler. Kyler yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, what he did, eight man. But he's so different, bro. It was it was kind of crazy. Like <laughs> is I know he could do it in eleven man too, but just with the the way he would get open field and eight man was was crazy. You know, he would just be out, and he just he was so laterally quick, crazy. And it was just it was really sick to watch. Uh, basketball, it's not more local, but the Rochester Keepers tournament. Okay. Up in Rochester, I saw a lot of the D one players up there. Mm -hmm. uh, the Marriott Solomon's just going to Marquette. I mean, these guys are they're dunking like it's nothing. Yeah. I guess they're they're D one high caliber players and right. like catching them on film was really cool. I'm actually heading up there next month and they're all playing so okay, I'm excited for cool. that. Uh, baseball locally, I mean it's pitching. It's the, you know, Mitchell Earl. He's yeah, a good he's pitcher. From Homer. Yeah, he's a good pitcher. He's got some good stuff. And then lacrosse, man. Long Island guys. You go to Long Island you see it's a different breed down there. They right. they love that they love it down there. That's tough. What about you? 
Uh, I mean, I would say shout out my guy, Jameson Wang from Cornell. You know, he got me the media pass this year. And, you know, he looked out with that. And he's a starting quarterback. And he's nice. Like, mm -hmm. he, he, he got dripped. Like, the only quarterback I've seen wearing Prada cleats. Like, <laughs> he got dripped. Like, and like I said, he, he performed. And he got me that access to those Cornell games. So I appreciate him a lot. And then um, I would definitely say a lot of the players from the Binghamton basketball team, uh, they hooked me up with their AD and stuff like that and got me a, a full pass this year for Binghamton, which is cool. So shout out Binghamton University. They got me a 2024 media pass. So I can go to any game for them, which is dope. So I would say definitely those two those two um, colleges around here, Cornell and Binghamton, have been looking out and their players. And then, um, yeah, like, you know, meeting all the people at, like I said, the TBT, and then just all the high school players you meet. I can't really pick out anybody who is just so good because everybody's good in their own, you know what I mean? And there's so many different, you know, divisions, you know what I mean? Like, there's, you know, because you got class C and B and all that, so you know, so there's so many different levels to, you know, a kid is dominant there and then there's a kid dominant here. So, honestly, all the athletes I usually work with are pretty nice. Oh, and I'll definitely say recently there's a that kid from uh, Chittenango, Ryan Nash. Ryan he's Ryan a hooper. Right, <laughs> he's a hooper. I went to his game and he told me to pull up and film and bro dropped like 40 and and like I was like, yo, you're the only person to ever have me pull up, and you really you showed out. Nah, you know what I mean? Nah, you, you, out, showed you, running, bro, bro. Yeah, you, you showed out. Yeah, you showed out. Yeah, you showed out. I pulled up, and he actually showed out. A lot of people, you'll pull up. You know, they'll do their thing, but like he he showed out. Mm -hmm. And he actually he showed out in the aspect of it didn't look like he was jacking. It didn't look like he was being a ball hog. It just looked like he's naturally good at yeah. basketball. He's you good. Know? He's, he's solid. He's solid. He's solid. He's solid. All right, so in closing, um, I ask this question to everybody. Uh, we have about five minutes, but um, just what's some advice that you would give uh, people that are just struggling, bro? You're going through a hard time in life, you know what I'm saying? Um, we've kind of talked about that in this hour, uh, just different things that you guys had to overcome to get to where you're at now and, and where you're going to be. Uh, but, but what are just some general you know, state statements that you would tell somebody that's just going through? Uh, just like I said earlier, stay positive. And try to find your passion. If you're passionate about something, no matter what it is, really, if you can find that, it it gets you up in the morning. It makes you stay doing something. Like I'm gonna sit down and do this. Just it keeps you in the mindset of staying productive. You know, you're not sitting around doing nothing or just you know, when you, I feel like when you sit down, you're doing nothing. You kind of not everybody, but you get in the mindset of I don't want to do this or you get tired, you get lazy. So just to find that passion, stay positive and stick to it. You know, even if it's not going well at first, if people enjoy your stuff and you're confident in it, people are gonna enjoy it. Like just Love keep it. doing it. Love it. What would you do, bro? What would you say to these people? Don't let anyone tell you what you can do because they're not you. That's the biggest thing I could say is because, like I said, a lot of people will tell you something's impossible because it's impossible for them. And if it's impossible for them, they believe that it's impossible for everybody else, but that's not true. So I would say if you believe you can do something, do it. And if somebody doesn't think you can, if they think you can't do it, then let them think that, but just do it because if you know you can do it, you can do it. That's the only thing I can say because a lot of people are gonna tell you what you want is impossible, what you're doing is a waste of time, you know? And that's usually because they can't do what you're choosing to want to do or they don't have the they don't have the heart to do it and be able to take that criticism of people telling them that it's a waste of time mm -hmm. they want to be able to but they can't that's which right. that's hard because you know there's a lot of people that if you tell them they can't do something they'll believe it they'll be like oh i can't do that well okay you're right but you know it's those people that you tell them that they can't do it and they do it and show you that they can do it and hopefully that motivates the person that told them that they can't do it to want to do something as well. Love it, love it, love it, man. Um, so thank everybody for watching. I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Of course. Of course. Um, this is the pleasure be on you. This is the face, the faces, man, behind the cameras. So I want y'all to really, really see this, and um, I'm excited to drop this video already. I'm excited because um, uh, when y'all see these people at games, man, when y'all see my man, yo, Dapper Club, holla at him, bro. They're they're human yeah. beings just like us. And, and, 
I won't touch up that. Sometimes yeah. I got a little angry face on me. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'm not angry. You just come on to me say what's up. But well, facts. Fact, 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 I'm just locked in. I'm locked in. Doing that. My thing, okay. Okay. For real, right? You know how it happens? But, like, yeah. but that's the thing. Yeah, come say what's up. Yeah, let's go. But well, for real, because y'all gonna see after. Just listen. This is about an hour worth of, of genuine people talking about genuine life things that we all show them that we all go through, right? So um, I know they appreciate it, right? That's love. That's support. If you just say what's up, that's love. That's support. I uh, appreciate y'all for tuning in. I appreciate my guys for being guests. And uh, thank y'all. We out. <laughs> appreciate it, bro. What's dope? That shit, guys. Got the little mic right here. Is this a mic? Yeah. yeah. Got yeah. the mic.